the pieces you lack. You are not the void you keep. Stowed away. You are beautiful. A marvelous marble. For you lack the knowledge of the time it took to craft you. So every time you pull yourself back from the process, all you see is a lump of clay. You are not the rags you wear, the disfigured image of beauty that glances back at you in the mirror, the broken crown on the ground. You are not these chains that hold you captive, no words spoken to you in anger or haste. You are not your sins or your circumstances. You are not a waste or an unaccomplished dream. You are his. You are not failed hope. You are not a catastrophe. Nor the lies you whisper to yourself at night. You, O oh daughter of Zion. O oh captive one. You, O oh daughter of mine are a holy city, a vessel of the Most High, a manifestation of his glory, O daughter of Zion. Your adornment is not of your creation. Your garment has been hand-stitched by your creator, every woven knot a symbol of his mercy and love, every jewel on your crown of victories won. O oh, daughter of Zion, do not dismiss your beauty due to these turbulent terrains or cause your legs to shake at this mountain. Do not dismiss this dust you rise from because they were under someone's feet. O oh, daughter of mine, you are far more than your broken wings, bruised bones and aching muscles. You are far more than the limit you have placed on yourself, sleeping child. O oh, daughter of mine, how long will you wear these wraps of linen? How long will you remain in a tomb not meant for the living, O oh, daughter of mine? Your freedom eludes you, your wrists and ankles free, a captive no longer but still bound by the lies you tell yourself of inadequacy, insufficiency, lack, poverty. O oh, sleeping child, do not allow the devil rob you of these blessings. Do not allow fear to cripple you of them. Do not bound yourself to lies that only drift you further away from me. Awake, rise, stripped from shame, stripped from insecurities, stone rolled away. Wake up, my sleeping child, and behold God's beauty, the glorious works of my name. Come to me, bruises and all, and see my crown of thorns manifesting as your crown of glory. Wake. Praise the Lord. Can we rise up, church? We're going to start with prayers. And I believe you've listened to everything that has been going on this morning. One of the things we prayed about at the first service is for every mother that is hurting, every woman that is hurting, every woman that hides on Mother's Day, 
every woman that cries on Mother's Day because of what they're going through. So can we lift them up this morning as a church? If you know them, you don't even need to know them. Just pray that, Father, for every woman that has tears of sorrow because it's Mother's Day, for every woman that hides their face because it's Mother's Day, for every woman that refused to watch live stream service because it's Mother's Day, Lord, we lift them up before you today. You are the God that answers prayers. You said none will be barren in the land. Father, fulfill your word in the life of these women, oh God. Turn their sorrow into joy. Give them hope for the future. Show them, convince them, impress it in their heart that you are still interested in their lives and that you're still going to turn things around for them. And can we join our faith together and say, Lord, by this time next year, by this time next year, for every woman, for every man that is thinking of Mother's Day and Father's Day is coming up and they're crying and they have sorrow in their hearts. By this time next year, let that sorrow be turned into joy in the name of Jesus. Let them show their face in public next year and say, yes, now I can say I am a mother. Now I can say I am a father biologically in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever stone needs to be rolled away, we command you today, be rolled away in the name of Jesus. Whatever Whatever situation needs to be reversed, O oh God, God of restoration, rise up on their behalf, O oh God, and bring restoration to every womb, bring restoration to every organ, bring restoration to every body, O oh God, so that they can conceive that child and birth them to the glory of your name. And can we pray for every sick child? As of today, every mother that is spending Mother's Day in the hospital because of a child that is sick, Father Lord, we send your healing balm, we send your word on to them according to your word that we send your word and it will heal them and deliver them from every destruction in the name of Jesus cause there to be deliverance concerning those children for every child going through a mental health crisis that is in one institution or the other by virtue of today being Mother's Day father reach out to those children and heal them and deliver them and bring them to be reunited with their families in the mighty name of Jesus Lord, we thank you because we know you can do a lot more than what we have even asked for. And we receive it with thanksgiving. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for praying. You can have your seat. An announcement that I was asked to make is that next week, I believe that will be May 20th, we will have a special Bible study here. And I believe we have... Um, the National Prayer Coordinator, if I'm correct, coming in for that. So please make it a date with the Lord. Next week, Wednesday, we have a special Bible study. Amen. Can you welcome the people beside you? Welcome to church. If the person is a woman, tell them Happy Mother's Day. If they're a mother-to-be, still tell them Happy Mother's Day because it will happen. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. I bring greetings from Pastor Gide. He's out of town for today, but he sends his greetings. So quickly this morning, I will be speaking to us about a woman in the Bible named Jael. A woman in the Bible named Jael. For this month, our team taken from Isaiah 52, 1 to 2, says, I will arise and put on my strength as the Lord has commanded. The Lord has told us that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. But sometimes we get to a certain stage in our life that we doubt those words. We're not sure about it, so we step back. But we have this woman as an example, and her name is Jael. And the story is found in the book of Judges, chapter 4. And I title it, Opportunity Meets Preparation. Opportunity Meets Preparation. So that's my word for us this year as women, as mothers. God will bring opportunities your way. God will bring open doors your way. Make sure you are prepared for it. Make sure you are not caught unawares. So who is this woman? From the account that we have in Judges chapter 4, verse 17 to 24, the first thing we see is that she's hospitable. The Bible account tells us that Jael went out to meet Sisera. So when you get home, read the whole chapter if you're not familiar with that story. So there's a war going on. Someone escaped on foot and was coming towards a tent. And the Bible said she went out to meet him and said, turn aside my Lord. I mean, they knew each other from before. And do not fear. And the Bible says when he had turned aside 
with her into the tent. She covered him with a blanket. My first question to us, how hospitable are we? And I'm not just talking about to guests that comes to our house, as mothers, even to your own children. How concerned are you for your child? You see them doing something that you know the end result of this will not be good. Put aside that Canada rules and regulations says don't spank. Yes, but what are you doing about that situation? You can't just throw your hands up in the air and be like, well, we can't. No, 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 no. You still have to discipline that child. Are you hospitable? Can your children come to you when they have problems? Can they trust you? When you say, come, sit down, let us talk, do they believe you? Or are they shivering because they know what that means is not what you just said? So Jaya was hospitable. She invited him in. She took care of him. The second point that we can learn from Jael is she was brave and fearless. This is a time and season in the Bible that women were not, you know, they were not warriors except for Deborah. They were not out there doing stuff. But she was brave. She was fearless. She said, come, lay down, give him milk instead of water. She was skillful. She knew the right tool for the right assignment. And I said in the morning that I don't want to talk everything about what she did because there are children here. Because then you have questions to answer at two when you get to my spirit, right? But she was skillful. How many people know how to use a hammer? Women, I'm asking you now. You know how to use a screwdriver. Put your hand up. I'm, I'm asking, put your hand up. Clap for yourself. Right? You need to be skillful as a woman, as a mother in this end time. You need to be skillful. You cannot afford to just sit there with your 19th century knowledge. You need to be skillful. You need to be wise and decisive. Don't waste time. The man was sleeping. She didn't call her girlfriend and say, hey, Sister Lady, guess what? Guess who's in my house? Can you imagine? There's no time to waste. There are certain things you need to deal with right there and then. There is no time for selfie. There is no time to update your WhatsApp status. Deal with the situation immediately. She was futuristic minded. She could think ahead and be like, okay, this man is terrorizing these people. If I let him escape now, he will go back and build another hammy. I might do even worse later in the future. So she dealt with the situation now. And I'll come back to us as mothers. Your child, everything you ask them to do, they stomp, they slam the door. <clears throat> and you're like, they will outgrow it. You're just raising, if it's a boy, you're raising a wife bitter later in the future. If it's a girl, you're raising a husband bitter later in the future. Because the anger that you do not help them to deal with now, it will get worse to become an adult. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. She was quick thinking and vigilant. She knew that this man that's sleeping, if I wait for Deborah or uh, was it Balak or Balaam now to get here, he will wake up and he might run away. So she didn't waste time waiting for anybody. She was quick thinking and she did what she had to do immediately. The lessons we can learn from our life, she did not waste opportunities. Stop wasting opportunities. Look at the person beside you and tell them, stop wasting opportunities. The person sitting beside you right now, that person might be your opportunity. The information you will get from them if you greet them nicely and you exchange phone numbers after service, that might be the information you need for your breakthrough. Do not waste opportunities. You don't need a title to serve God's agenda. I don't remember seeing her name anywhere else in the Bible, except for this part. She wasn't the prophetess. She wasn't the wife of the president. She was just Jael, the wife of Hebite the Canaanite, if I remember correctly. You don't need a title to serve. You don't need to hold a microphone to win souls. You don't need to be recognized to do what God has called you to do. Start from your home. Start from your place of work. Start from your neighborhood. Now it's summer. There will be kids running around the streets. Get to know them if it's safe. I'm not saying go and knock on their parents' door. But check. There might be something. There might be a need that you can meet in the life of those people. 
For those that teach children's church, there might be a child in that class that is going through stuff. And if you show them compassion like Jael, if you're a listening ear for them, you might just help them to deal with that situation. Pay attention to what matters to God. It mattered to God that the Israelites get delivered. And Jael could key into that. And even though she was not one of them, she was able to work with God's agenda to deliver the people. Teach your hands to war. Develop yourself. Don't sit on yesterday's knowledge. The 21st century, things change so fast. Do you know what they're teaching your children at school? Do you know all the acronyms that they're adding extra, extra, extra to? Do you know what they mean? Do you know the battles they're fighting on social media? You don't need to be on the social media, but at least have an idea of what's going on in there so that you can help yourself and your children. Be wise, knowledgeable, and have understanding. Be wise. You see a child around your child, you can see they don't have good intentions. Instead of fighting your child and say, stop moving with that child. Remember, you won't see them when they're in school. What else can you do? Go into your tent and pray that bad friend away from your child. And you can even be like Jael and invite that bad friend home and feed them and entertain them and just get them talking. You never know. Maybe their salvation is in your hands. That is where the wisdom comes in. Be wise, be knowledgeable, and have understanding. My next point says, identify your tent door. We all have a tent. <laughs> and we're all standing at the door of a tent. That's your place of assignment. How well are you standing there? How prepared are you while standing there? What are you doing at your tent door? Don't make your tent door a place of just chit-chatting, a place of just catching up, a place of just gossiping. Man your tent door properly. The first one is your marital tent. If you're married, that's a tent. And you have to keep the door. Remember the Bible says a wise woman builds her home. It's not just in decorating the home, spiritually building your home. So that your husband is not making wrong decisions. Because if he does, you're both going to suffer for it. The example here is Ananias and Sapphira. So in the morning, I said it's just like we have legacy building, right? So then you decide to go sell a property because you want to support legacy building. But you both decided we will lie about how much we sold it. And they joined forces to lie. That's a tent door. Maybe if the wife had prayed more, approached him and said, you know what, this thing... I don't think God will be happy with it. Let's just tell them we sold it for this amount, but this is the amount we decide to give. Will the apostles have rejected the money? I mean, if you sold the house now, you, like Pastor Brandon, you sell a house now, you come to Pastor Gideon and say, we sold it for $500,000, and we would like to give two fifty dollars to the church. Will Pastor Gideon say, ah, bring everything? No. So why lie? Why join force to do evil? The second one is a parental tent. And my example is Hannah and Samuel. S Hannah raised Samuel, weaned him, and took him to the temple and left him there. In the house of Eli, where Eli's sons were misbehaving. How did Samuel survive there? Because her mother did not leave that tent door. She kept praying for her son. You cannot afford to leave your children, go to school a day, and not pray over them. Because you don't know who they're going to mix with out there. You don't know what they're watching when you're not there. Even sometimes they don't own the device themselves, but they're watching it on someone else's device. Man that tent door properly. Train up a child in the way they should go. But apart from that training, is also praying over the training that you've done so that the seed will bring forth good fruits. The other tenth door is in our career or our businesses. Whatever the work of our hands is, know what you're doing with the increase God has given you. Know the decisions you're making with your business. Is your business 
honoring God. Uh, I went by a restaurant once, and obviously the owners are Christians, and the music that was playing on the radio, on the overhead, was Christian music, and I'm like, this is what we're talking about. Because when you go other places, they play whatever music they want to play. So this is my business, play, you know, godly music. The other one is the ministry tent. Who are the people you are associating with? So we are all in ministry. Apart from in the home, you serve in a department in church, you are in ministry. Who are you associating with? And how are you making sure that their impact upon your life is not corrupting you and bringing evil into your tent? Relationship tent, Abraham and Lot. Abraham was the one God sent, and he did his nephew a favor by taking him along. But he misused that opportunity. Lot did not see beyond his nose. All he could see was green pasture. He forgot that there is a covering over Abraham's life. He should have just stayed in that tent and walk with Abraham. Praise the Lord. Your tent is custom made for you. Can you look at your neighbor and tell them that? Your tent is custom made for you. Sometimes we look at another person's tent and we're like, oh, I want to be like that person. I want to sing like that sister. I want to be able to lead prayer like that sister. I want this kind of house this person has. Your tent is custom made for you. You are in competition with yourself and no one else. Compete with yourself. Look at last year. Where was I? What can I do better this year? Compete with yourself. Develop yourself. Do not despise your tent door. Your grass is green enough to meet your need per season. Leave your neighbor's grass. Focus on your own grass. Do not drop the ball. Be determined to be a better version of yourself each day. And while you're at your tent door, be on guard. The, the battles that we're fighting, they're not physical. The people we are warring against is not a government of this world. They are principalities and powers. And they don't care. All they are after is to populate hell. So you have to make sure that you stand on guard at your tent door. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You are not wrestling against village people. It is the spirit behind the village people that you're wrestling against. And you cannot win that war without fasting and praying and dedication unto the Lord. You have to for your own good. In conclusion, you have a very big God. Now, when we stand, uh, stand at the tent door, when we're manning our assignment and our post, there will be times that we'll be afraid. There will be times that we'll just be weary. We just want to give up. You cannot afford to. When fear comes knocking, remember you have a very big God. When disappointment comes knocking, remember you have a very big God. When the assignment seems to be too big for you, remember you have a big God that can handle any assignment. It's the same God that parted the Red Sea. Is the same God that we've read about in the Bible. And he has a track record of keeping his word. Whatever he's done back then, he can still do it for you. So whether you're worried over a child, you're worried over will you have a child, you're worried about your family, you're worried about will I have money to pay tuition, remember the God that you serve is the one that's your shepherd and says you will never lack everything that you need. Everything that you need to survive, to thrive, and to flourish on this earth, he has it in his hands. And he's more than willing to release it to you when you ask. So wake up. Take your position at the tent door. Get your mind set on taking advantage of every opportunity. Do yourself a favor of thriving where you're planted. God is not limited by our refusal to rise up to the assignment. Remember the Bible says, if men refuse to praise him, he will raise up stones. You will not be replaced by stones in the name of Jesus. You have a very big God. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I have a very big God. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for your word.
thank you for making our souls and our hearts fertile for that word to bring forth food. Lord, help us. We rededicate ourselves to you, knowing that you are with us. You are in us, and you can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we we'll ask or think. So as we rise up as women, as mothers, and we man our tent door, watching over the assignments you've put into our hands, Father, walk with us, uphold us, and strengthen us. We will finish well. We will not fail you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. I still have two more things to talk about. And uh, I'm going to ask the ladies that are going to lead us in the very big God dance to please start making their way up. Thank you for doing that on Saturday at the conference. It was really good. So the next thing that I would like to talk about is part of developing yourself and making sure that you have all the skills that you need to man your tent door is also to find time out of the busyness of life and spend time with God. So our second set of retreats for this year, we've done one in April. The second one will be in July, July 5 to 6, and registration for that will open on June 5. So if you know you will be part of that one, save the date and look out for the registration so that you do not miss that. The second one is something that has been in my heart for a while, and it's manning the tent door for our nursing mothers. One of the tactics of the devil during maternity leave is postpartum depression. And I pray none of us will go through that in Jesus' name. I met someone over the weekend was narrating what's going on with their sister, and it's very, very sad. Postpartum depression. So we'll be starting something in the month of June called Refresh, and it's a virtual check-in session for moms on maternity leave or any mother that is at home with little children. Thank you. It's gonna start virtually. And we'll see how God takes it, if it will go in person or not. It will hold second Tuesday of the month at 2 p.m. We're going to be using Zoom for that. So more information will be passed across to us as time goes by. Now, the last information was just sent to me, and I added it onto my PowerPoint, because part of developing yourself is finding out your innate abilities that you can serve God with. So there is a training that's going to happen uh, temple sound training on Saturday, May 25th uh, at 11 a.m. And it's a training for anyone that's interested in media, sound, and all of those things that the people up there that they do to make sure you can hear me, to make sure people at home can watch us, and how to just make things work properly. So I believe they will send that also out by email. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So very big God people, are you ready? So I'm going to ask all the women to please rise to your feet and let's dance forward as they start playing that song. And what you're doing when you do that dancing, come, keep coming, Maz. What, you do, what you're doing when you do that is you're stamping what you're saying, that I have a very big God. It will not disappoint me. It will not fail me. It will not let me go. Amen. So music, ladies. Oh, it's all ladies up there today. Good job. Okay, so women of God, please rise up. Grandmothers, mothers, aunties, sisters. Let's make our way forward as we dance to this song. And trust me, I don't know the hand move too. So let's just dance. Amen. Start coming forward. Don't be shy, remember? Brave and fearless women. <laughs> 